On this week's episode of Grab a Gear, we see just how far a car can skip across the pond. I'm Jared, and you're watching Grab a Gear. And if you're like me, you have really contemplated just how far can you skip a car across a pond. Now, I really have contemplated this more than once, and today is the second time. So, today's the day. I've decided I'm going to give her hell. We're going to send her full speed from the beginning of our track over there down this straight section. I'm going to come in as fast as I can, see just how far we can get it. I reckon I can get about halfway. You know, underwater. <laughs> so, we'll see what happens. Here we go. All right, so here we go getting ready. We uh we did record sound here, but you could hear it tapping on the windshield. I apparently put it camera too far forward, so it was tap 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 the whole time. But all I'm talking about here is how I'm the only one brave enough to actually send a car into the water out of the three of us and uh how Dan is emotionally attached to his vehicles. That's why the Buick is still running. But the Buick is often awesome, so I, I have to be attached to it. Yeah, true. All right, so at this point, what I'm doing is I'm explaining to everybody the safety measures that we've taken. We, uh, you know, we have all the windows down, except for the driver window. I do roll that up. Um, at the same time, you know, I'm going to be seat belted in. I have a helmet on. We're trying to be as safe as we can here. We also position the truck, so a uh, quick recovery, hopefully. That way everything is just smooth, easy going. We also disabled the airbags and drained most of the fuel out, so that way, you know, there's no issues, really. Hopefully nothing goes wrong here. So the plan was I would honk the horn three times and then take off. So here I am. Yep, no horn. You can see I'm a little angry. So I rev up the engine and try to honk the horn again. No avail. That's good enough. I'm going for it. So I floor it, sending it as hard as I can. It is nothing more than a herd of turtles going as fast as it can down the road, coming up on the lake. And here we go right here. Yeah, it was amazing. Surprisingly went a lot further than we anticipated. I was like, well, okay, time to get out of here. I feel the car sinking, but you'll be able to see here in a second, another camera angle. Here it comes once I climb over. So here I am, coming in as hard as I can. Got up to about 55, 60 miles an hour. I mean, honestly, it went pretty far. It really did. Here's another camera angle from the other side. Yeah, we're definitely surprised at how uh, far he actually made it into the water. Yeah, it was a lot further than we anticipated. Here it goes. Yeah, see, and we had a, a 30-foot recovery strap and it ended up not quite being long enough as you'll see so this part is a sped up time lapse because i wanted to show people how quickly the water came in so you can see the armrests that my feet are sitting on i'm sitting outside the car look at that it's coming in pretty quick just watch that armrest yes yes it's getting deeper and deeper you'll see a couple bottles of soda and other stuff floating around if uh, Sam's Club or Pepsi feel like sponsoring us, feel free to reach out to us. And there goes the armrest. It's now underwater. So that's pretty deep. It honestly went a lot deeper than we anticipated. But honestly, it went a lot further in the water than we anticipated. The uh, total... Oh, look, Pepsi. There you go. The, uh, the car went actually about 60 feet at an angle, but the closest point was over 30 feet away from the shore. So here it is. <laughs> yes. It's so a this boat. is me laughing. <laughs> and you can see we have the truck backed up all the way to the water. And it's not long enough. Dan is super angry because he's actually the one getting wet. I refused to get wet unless I had to. I did not want to. I figure I drove it. Dan can get wet. <laughs> But, yeah, we ended up not being able to hook up because we didn't we come prepared. Uh, we didn't have a clevis or a, a hitch to hook onto. So we had to wait for Colin to get out there. But here we are pulling it out. 
Perfect, yes. I'm just pointing out something that the Duramax is sitting there while an F-150 pulls it out. But anyways, so yeah, here we are, another time-lapse one. Um, this is Colin. He's just trying to make sure there's no water in the intake. Pull the air box out, see if we could get it to fire. Um, my What I was doing at this point is trying to get the water to drain out of the floorboard, so just ignore anything you see in my hand. Um, don't worry about any of that. But using the amazing hole punching machine that we have, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, nothing to see. But yeah, so we uh, got all the water out we could. I didn't honestly want to get wet, like I said. So what I did is I uh, waited for Colin to get done, got a bucket, started getting the water out. You'll see here in a second. Colin said, well, I think we got most of the water out of the intake. Let's see if we can get it out. So here I am getting some water out. You can see, look at the tires, just how muddy it is in that pond. It is super muddy. I'm pretty sure in a later video, you'll be able to see just how deep it is when Dan has to walk in it. <laughs> I mean, it is deep, super deep. The water is not deep, but the mud is. So here I, I get in, fire it up. It does fire. It actually started a couple times. You can see right there in the back, a little smoke, but it wouldn't stay running. So we ended up not actually getting it to run, so we had to tow it back. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for all of our videos. See you guys next week.